Hello everyone. Welcome to our video on finding the equation of a tangent line based on this function here where we'll need to use both the quotient rule and the chain rule. All right, so finding the equation of a tangent line is a common thing that we do in calculus. The process for it is step one, we'll find the derivative. We need to find derivative. So then we could plug this into our derivative to get the slope. So find the derivative to find m tan. All right, so let, let's write our function. So it's our, our function is f of x equals 3x squared plus 5 over 6t. Oops, okay, so that, that should be an x. There we go. So 6x minus 5 to the 4. So a mixture of variables, so it should have been just x's. All right, so it looks something like this, and then when we find the derivative, we would state, or at least I would say, because we see it's a quotient, so I know I have a high portion and I have a low portion. And so then I can set up my quotient rule. Okay, so I'm using the quotient rule here. All right, so our quotient rule tells us it's low d high minus high d low all over low low and then I could put the parentheses in to help okay so the low function times the derivative of the high function minus the high function times the derivative of the low function over the low one times itself or the low one squared all right so now let's start to plug what we can in so I'm going to set up a big old fraction that hopefully is enough room all right so I've got my low expression which is the 6x minus 5 to the fourth power, and then the derivative of the high expression. Okay, so this I can just look at, and we could plug that in. So the derivative of the high expression looks like it'd be 6x, and that's it, just 6x. And then we have minus our high expression, which is 3x squared plus 5, times the derivative of the low expression. Well, the derivative of the low expression, this requires the chain rule. Okay, so the low expression, chain rule for the low expression, for the derivative of the low. So I'm gonna set it up with just saying low to the side here is six x minus five to the fourth. And with our chain rule, I'm gonna use green. Our chain rule tells you whatever you have as a, a an expression raised to a power, that expression should be your u, or whatever letter you use. So if you use g, or if you use h, or if you use v, um, it all works very similar, just different letters. Okay, so there's the u, and then our derivative of u with respect to x here looks like it'd be just 6. So remember, as soon as you find your u, find your derivative of that u with respect to whatever the letter is on the right. And then now that I have that, I can go back to my low and say, hey, this is the same thing as just u to the 4. So my low expression is u to the 4. And then that way I, I can set up my power rule to find the derivative of the low. So the derivative of the low is, so 4 comes to the front, and then we have u still. Minus 1 from that 4 would be 3. As a power, let me let me fix that three. So minus one from the power gives us the three. And then we just have to remember, hey, times it by that derivative of the u with respect to whatever letter we did it to. So times the derivative of u with respect to x. Okay, and then all of that can now be plugged in. So our d low is four u, which is six x minus five all raised to the third power, and then the du dx is 6. So that, that's all. Okay, and then now I can plug that in. So in the red, let's plug it in. But before I do, let me highlight these constants would just multiply. So 6 times 4 is 24, and then 6x minus 5 is attached, and it's raised to the third power like that. Okay, and then our low one would get squared, so we have 6x 
I'm going to write it like this. Oops, 6x minus 5 raised to the 4th times itself. So I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to do low, low. You could just do 6x minus 5 to the 8th would be squaring that, that uh, expression. But I'm going to write it like this for this problem. Okay, and the reason for that is because, well, in this next step... I can look to factor again. So let's let's try factoring. Okay, so when we factor, notice that the 6x minus 5 raised to the 4th power and 6x minus 5 raised to the 3rd power have a common uh, factor. It is the 6x minus 5 raised to the 3rd. So I'm going to take that out. So the 6x minus 5 raised to the third is in common. And then the only other thing, so there is something else in common. This, there's a 6 as a factor that's in common with 24. So let's take that out. And actually, I'll put that first. So if we take 6 out of those, I'm just going to put 6 here out in front of everything. And then now I'm going to set up my big parentheses. And we have our first term. Well, left over out of the 6x minus 5 to the 4th, if we took a cube out of that, we would be left with a 1 power. So it's 6x minus 5 just to the 1st, just like that. And then this x is also still around. And then we have our minus. This in the blue, we didn't change it, anything about it. So it's, it's still there in parentheses, just like that. The 24, we were able to take a 6 out of it. So 24 divided by 6 is 4. And then this whole expression in the red, we took out entirely. So that means we now have factored it completely. And then in the denominator, I do have 6x minus 5. Now, uh, so I wrote it like this. So again, I, you, you could have done 8 immediately. I wrote it like this to show the 4 and the 4 would add to make 8. So remember, if you square if you square a power, so side note, 6x minus 5 to the 4 getting squared, we would have multiplied those powers to get 8 still. Okay, so it would work the same way. So, But just be careful, don't actually square the 4 to write it as 16. That would, that would be wrong. It is just 8. Okay, and then now that it's written like this, well, I'm going to do a few other things here to simplify. I'm going to do two things in one. Notice 6x minus 5 to the third and 6x minus 5 to the 8 are in common. And they are, so this 6x minus 5 has been separated from the rest, so it is factored out. Remember, you can only simplify once you've factored completely. 6x minus 5 cubed and 6x mi minus 5 to the 8 would reduce so that 6 is still there, but these cancel, and I would have. 6x minus 5 to the 5th left over. So the 3 and the 8 cancel out. Because the 8 is bigger and in the denominator, we keep the 5 down in the denominator like this. Okay, and then inside these parentheses, well, we would simplify the x would distribute. So we have 6x squared minus 5x. And then over here, this would also, the 4 would distribute, and so would the negative. So I'm going to do two distributing in one. So these are both positive inside the parentheses, so the negative would make them both negative, and then we'll just multiply the coefficients by 4. So we have negative 12x squared, and then this would be minus 20. Okay, so we're almost there. So our f prime of x... It looks like it is simplified now. I have 6 still just hanging out. In the blue parentheses, the x squared terms are common. So that means I would have negative 6x squared left over when they combine. And then a minus 5x. And then a minus 20. All over 6x minus 5 to the 5th. Okay, and I'm clouding it. That's not our, our answer or anything, but it is helpful. Now, so that, that's the long part. So that's, we've seen the find the equation of a tangent line before. This is what they kind of just boil down to as we progress. They just get harder and harder because the derivatives are a little harder. Okay, so but stay patient.
All right, and then now that I do have the derivative though, I want my mtan by plugging in the given x value. So now we can get it. So mtan would be equal to f prime of one, and we'll plug all that in. So I have six, parentheses, negative six times one is, is negative six, negative five times one would be minus five, and then minus 20. Down below, six times one is six minus five raised to the fifth. Okay, so notice I'm, I'm simplifying as I go since one's an easy number to deal with. And then I can simplify this all the way. So our, I'm gonna write it as just mtan equals, okay, so in the numerator, it looks like I have six times uh, negative 31. So negative six minus five minus 20 is negative 31 over six minus five is one raised to the fifth. Well, one to the fifth is one. So I really just have to multiply this, which is negative 186. So six, 12, 18, yep. Yeah. So that is our mtan. Okay, and I boxed it, but it's still not even the answer. So that was, first, that was our first step. So we found the slope. Now our second step is to get a point which is to plug in one into our original function or plug in whatever x value. So they're saying x is one in this problem. So I would just plug it into that equation. Let me go ahead and write the f of x so I can see it without scrolling. So f of x is three x squared plus five over six uh, x minus five to the fourth. Okay, so I'm sorry, the T, that, that should be fixed before you even print it, but this that's going to be T in case I forgot to fix it. So it's 6X minus 5, not 6T. So 6X minus 5 to the fourth. Okay, so if I plug 1 in, I'd have 3 times 1 squared is 3, plus 5, over 6 minus 5, again, is 1, raised to the fourth. Well, 3 plus 5 is 8, over 1 is 8. So we have the point 1 comma 8. Okay, so there's our point, and with the point, we know that that first coordinate, that's our x1, and then the y is our y1. Okay, so the step two is pretty nice, and then finally, our, our last step is to use the line equation, which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And we have all of that. Let's plug them all in. So y minus 8 equals the slope, the negative 186, times x minus the x1, which is 1. And then now we'll just distribute. So we have y minus 8 equals negative 186x, and then negative 186 times negative 1 is positive 186. And then our final step is just to add the 8 to both sides. And there, we're going to have it. So we finally got it. So we got the equation y equals negative 186x. And then that looks like it's plus 194. Okay, so that's the equation of the line that's tangent to our function at that x value of 1. Okay, so that's it. So, um... If you do have any questions, so so the, it's always the same process though for finding the equation, except again, the function's gonna get a little trickier to find the derivative. Um, still take your time. All right, so still, still patience game. All right, so if you do have questions, please let me know. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.